Here we are at Loch Esk Station with the two final rail cars in the series, uh, although there are a number of odds, uh, very odd rail cars and other vehicles which I'm going to uh, talk about in a future video. But these are the final developments of the uh, rail car, uh, conventional rail car series uh, in the, uh, on the County Donegal Railways. And we have here, we have rail car, I'm just going to change that. We have rail car uh, number 19 in one of its uh, liveries. This is the so-called Whiskers livery, um, and uh, it could seat 41 passengers. It's a development, a full cab development, a much larger cab, um, uh, full uh, cab with the driving bogey again, um, built by uh, Walker Brothers and with a Gardner 6LW diesel engine. Could seat 41 and. Um, it was introduced in 1950 and its sister uh, rail car over here Let's see if I can just click on that, there we are sister rail car number 20 in another variation of the livery um, was introduced in the following year in, um, in 1951 and these saw out uh, the last decade of the County Donegal Railway and um, were very important vehicles because they were very reliable, very comfortable, they were heated uh, and really they do demonstrate what rail cars could do. Of course they still have to be turned at each destination on a turntable because they are um, can only be driven from one end. So this is one of the limitations of the Donegal, uh, of the Donegal uh, system although uh, it has to be said that um, that uh, for at least one of the uh, bespoke or very odd indeed uh, rail cars, it was um, it was not the case that they were had, that it had to be turned. It could be driven from either end. And I shall cover that in a future uh, video. But here we are at the little Lochesque station, which was always a important place because, as you can see, it was a passing place. There's a passing loop there where number nine, 19 is waiting to head on into Donegal Town, while number 20 here is. Uh, aiming to go up into the gap and so we're set number 20 going and just let it leave get a bit of speed up and just get a bit closer and as soon as it's away then um, the station staff would, or indeed the rail car guard all of these were driven uh, had a driver and uh, conductor on board Let's give it a bit of speed, speed there and away it goes with the diesel fumes pouring out the top much, much less odiferous than the steam locos of course and there it is heading off towards um, Barnes Barnsmore Gap, um, Bar Barnsmore uh, Halt uh, near Video Barnes, the pub. Give it a bit more speed, you know, disappearing into the distance. And if we go click on number 19 so that we can take her out, the points would have been changed and she could then proceed. Of course, I'm sure you'll notice that on this uh, model of mine I still haven't added any signalling, which is <laughs> a bit ridiculous, but this is the first place after Stranora that there were um, actual signals controlling the traffic all the way through the gap of course between Stranola and Lochesk it was just uh, operated uh, on a token so only one train could occupy the length at any one time and so we just let it pull into Lochesk station and uh, where it, usually there'd be an exchange of mail and certainly some passengers but this time what will happen is we'll just let it run on to take the route right the way through without stopping which would be very unusual indeed uh, take it on through to uh, towards Donegal Town on the run down through the easier gradients elsewhere uh, in the gap coming down out of the gap and over to our right here is off to Loch Esk itself and the hills in the distance over the crossing there, this little roadway that came down from the side of the hills 
and this is about the spot where the original uh, West Donegal Railway managed to reach before the money ran out. Uh, both of these um, 19 and 20 in various liveries survived right to the end of the railway in 1960 and they were both bought by the Isle of Man Railway where they ran for a number of years but as I understand it they are now in storage awaiting uh, restoration and repair. Um, they both of course as with all Donegal Railway um, vehicles are wooden bodied which always makes a problem as far as heritage services are concerned for safe health and safety these days but nevertheless they were very um, uh, powerful and very fine looking vehicles and operated very successfully across the Donegal system uh, but all, all the, of, it, of it that was left by 1950 um, the Derry branch was uh, was under threat um, certainly the Killy, the Glenties line from Stranola to Glenties had been closed but they, these ran right the way up through to Killy Lakes and down to Valley Shannon and back to Stranora and Staban right the way through to the closure of the railway on the last day of the year in 1959. As I say, they were then bought at auction by the Isle of Man Railways and so continue um, in existence. So that really covers the main uh, list of rail cars, but there are quite a few odd, odd vehicles that. Um, appeared on the Donegal Railway as rail cars and I'm going to cover rail cars and trailers and I shall cover those in various future videos. So both of these, I've modelled these with a variety of liveries uh, with the whiskers, with the so-called V livery, uh, with more conventional front livery. In the 50s the Donegal was very proud of these vehicles and rightly so and used or they used them regularly on the front of their public timetables and in publicity and uh, they were certainly very well received by the public so there we are as it's entering into that deep cutting uh, heading towards Clough Bridge and that's where we'll leave rail car number 19 and its sister heading up through the gap 